think I'll order some champagne while we're waiting. Champagne at these prices? Are you mad? <sighs> Shut up and eat your nuts. I intend to make the right impression tonight, and what an impression. Even as we speak, a black Rolls Royce is purring through the streets to pick them up. What? How much did that cost? Nothing. I borrowed it from the undertaker. <laughs> he owed me. I got him this bale of black serge, so he let me have the roller complete with chauffeur for the evening. Oh. They're late. Well, of course they're late. He only does ten miles an hour. <laughs> Why are you going to all this trouble? Because tonight, Clive, I'm going to make my move. Oh, no. What do you mean, oh, no? I hate it when you make your move, Mel. Something always goes wrong. Not tonight. I've kept her waiting long enough. I thought she was keeping you waiting. Yeah. It may seem like that, Clive, but the truth is, we're never alone. We can't go back to her place for obvious reasons. I know. She won't let you in. <laughs> she won't let me in because it's a house full of bitter memories, besides which is as cold as charity in there. You could go back to your place. You're forgetting the old lady. She's even colder. She still thinks a boy's best friend is his mother. It would not be the ideal place to consummate our relationship, so I thought... <laughs> Wait for it, Clive. I thought... What about here? A bit crowded, Malk. I was thinking of upstairs, Clive. There's only bedrooms up there. Right. You don't mean... I can get a room. Interested? No, it costs a fortune. Not if you know the night porter. If I slip him a tenner, I can get a room for an hour. Oh, no. What do you mean, oh, no? They'd be insulted. Insulted? Have you seen those rooms? Air-conditioned, ankle-deep pile, and a view of the city to take your breath away. Lights twinkling like diamonds, people scurrying below like ants. She feel like a goddess. Are you sure? Of course I'm sure. What you're going to witness tonight, Clive, is the gentle art of seduction. She doesn't stand a chance. Mal. But I've got a key. Right. 3.03, just by the lift. Got it. Who's he? A mate. Does he want a real? He's thinking about it. No sherry. No. <laughs> and no parties. Oh, and leave the rumours you'd have to find it, Mark. No rings round the bath. And don't swipe the coat hangers. Don't worry, Bert, we'll be good. Oh, yeah. Yeah. If you're going to be good, why do you want a room? <laughs> <laughs> My friends and I need somewhere to change for the formation dancing. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, you're a devil, Mark. What a dirty old man. Yeah, he's revolting, isn't he? Don't you think this is all a bit crude, Melk? Crude? Rolls Royce, champagne, luxury apartment, what's crude about it? Do you have any real feelings for her? Of course I do. I'm crazy about her. Why do you think I've gone to all this trouble? I'm thinking of a certain four-letter word, Melk. So am I. <laughs> what word? <laughs> love, Melk. Why, love? I know what it means. You love her? And you're going to take her into that room with that dirty old man sniggering outside the door, probably peeping through the keyhole? He won't see anything. I always hang my jacket over the doorknob. <laughs> well, I must say, Malcolm certainly does things in style. What about the Rolls Royce? Yeah. You're not impressed, are you? No. Why not? It was a hearse, Jackie. <laughs> no, it wasn't. Of course it was. We only did ten miles an hour. <laughs> and why did that man take his hat off when we passed? <laughs> I thought it was a tribute to us. It was a tribute to the deceased. <laughs> he thought we were going to a funeral. And we're not careful. That's what it's going to be. Ours. Why? Because Malcolm's got that gleam in his eye again tonight. So don't drink too much. Oh, I can hold my drink, Pam. I know. It's when you swallow it the trouble starts. <laughs> well, I think it's very sweet of Malcolm to go to all this trouble. He's only trying to cheer you up. You've told him, haven't you? Told him what? About this. What is it? You know what it is. The decree absolute. Don't crease it. I want to put it next to my swimming certificate. <laughs> I'm sorry, Pam. Don't be. It's not everyone that gets one of these, Jackie. I shall soon have the set. Birth, marriage, divorce. Only need one more. What's that? Death. <laughs> and then bingo. Oh, shut up, Pam. Well, then, don't feel sorry for me. After all, it happened to you. I didn't hear you complain. It was different for me. What do you mean, different? Well, you see, <clears throat> I was the... <laughs> what? The guilty party. Were you? I didn't know that. You never told me, Jackie. 
Well, I think I was the guilty party. <laughs> it was difficult to be sure. You see, we had this sort of modern marriage. Not quite open, but not exactly closed. You mean sort of ajar? Yes. <laughs> well, there was this neighbour. He was a chartered accountant with a Porsche and a farmhouse in the Dordogne. And one thing led to another. Was he sighted? Mm. Coming out the back door. <laughs> no! I mean, was he named as the co-respondent? Oh, yes. Which was a bit of a joke, actually, because he never put anything in writing. <laughs> and I never did see the Dordogne. But I know what it does to you, and I know how you feel. And that's why we're going to do everything to make this a special night. We're going to do everything to please you. I should be all right. As long as they don't play the way we were. What? I think that would really break me up. Oh, but I thought that was your favourite song. No, it was our favourite song. I shall never hear that again without thinking of Colin. Oh. Got more drink, Malk. Yeah, the champagne was just the beginning. Now it's time for the Harvey Wallbangers. What are they? Well, on the surface, orange juice with just a hint of Galliano, but lurking below, like a thug down an alley. Vodka, a double. <laughs> they won't be able to stand up. Precisely. <laughs> we have to weaken their resistance. Well, why don't we just chloroform them? <laughs> Do I sense a certain disapproval, Clyde? I just don't think this is a way, Malk. Pamela's not that sort of girl. I'm striking while the iron's hot. She's just had her cards. Her what? A decree absolute. She's a free woman now. That's why I'm giving her the treatment. Now, get those drinks across. I'm going to request her favourite song. Blimey. You think of everything, don't you, Mel? That's right, Clive. There we are, girls. I'll be wallbanged. And now, a special request for a little lady who's feeling particularly lonely tonight. From a friend who wants to keep her company in her darkest hour. For you, Pamela, the way we were. <laughs> How's Pam? Oh, she's a little distressed, but Malcolm's with her. He thinks she should lie down. He didn't say where, did he? What? Well, I don't think we should leave her alone, Jackie. She's not alone, she's with Malcolm. Do you know something, Clive? What? For some reason, you look devastatingly handsome tonight. <laughs> Must be the champagne. <laughs> I didn't have any. <laughs> but I did. And you look wonderful. So do you, Jack. Oh, I've always been careful not to drink too much when I'm with you. Why? In case I make a fool of myself, Clive. You know my feelings. Feelings? I think I've repressed my emotions far too long. I understand that can be quite harmful, Doctor. Highly dangerous. <laughs> I've repressed them because I didn't want you to think I was throwing myself at you. I know that's a hazard in your profession. Patients, nurses, physiotherapists. <laughs> well, I tried to keep them at bay, Jackie, but it's not been easy since Julie left. You still miss her, don't you, Clive? Not anymore. Oh, how long is it now? Two months, three weeks, five days. I don't want the hours, Clive. I know I can't take her place, that I'm not like her in any way. Well, no, she was taller than you. She I know was... she was taller than me. But some people can be too tall. I know I can't take her place, but I might just be able to make you forget her. Forget her? If we were alone. Alone? Trouble is, we're never alone. If only there was a place for us, a time and a space for us. <laughs> I think I might be able to arrange that, Jackie. <laughs> Brought you a drink, Pam? No, thank you. Sorry about the song. It's not your fault. It's all the little things that get you, isn't it? Sounds, smells. I remember the first girl I ever kissed. I was only 13, but I can still remember the ponds, vanishing cream, and the grass in the <laughs> 
That's lovely. Who was it? You, Pen. No. You could charm the birds off the trees, Mark. All except you. Nice view. I know a better one. Do you? You know what they say? They say that when you lose your faithful hound, you should go straight out and get yourself another one. That way you don't get upset by the sight of an empty basket. That's what they say. They don't say go out and get yourself a wolf, though, do they? A wolf? You don't know me. No. I sometimes wonder whether you exist at all outside the cinema. What do you mean? Well, you hand your cigarettes out like Paul Hendry in Now Voyager. Sometimes you talk like Mitchum, sometimes you walk like Bert Lancaster. I never know who you are. You don't miss much, do you? No, I'm afraid not. You don't live in the real world, Malk. What about you? You're acting like Greta Garbo. No, I'm not. Always wanting to be alone? No. Keeping us waiting for Garbo's first kiss till we wonder what all the fuss is about. I wasn't... two other people. But this is you, isn't it, Malk? Yes. Not Mitchum or Cagney? No. Or Bert Lancaster? No. Here's looking at you, kid. Yes, Bert, isn't he? That is my name. I wondered if there was another room available. Another room? I don't understand, sir. Letting rooms is not part of my responsibility. No, I wondered if you could let me have a room for a little while. <laughs> what do you think I am, sir? Some sort of pimp. No, 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 no. I'm a friend of Melk's. Oh. Oh, yes. Oh, I didn't recognise you for the moment. You've become a trifle flush. <laughs> and I do have to be careful. Of course. Is that the young lady? Yes. I wish I was young again. Do you? Eh? What? <laughs> <laughs> Actually, she's a very nice lady. Yeah, of course. Is she drunk? <laughs> <laughs> right. Well, since you're a friend of Malk's, you can have 707. It's the honeymoon suite. Thank you, being as it's the honeymoon suite, it comes a little dearer. <laughs> oh, and a word of warning. Try not to disturb the furniture and don't swipe the soap. No. Will a couple of hours be sufficient for your purposes, sir? <laughs> Fine. <laughs> Clive, who was that revolting old man? Oh, it's just an old porter. What was he laughing at? Nothing. He's just a bit simple. Now, I'm going to show you this incredible view. Mm, is that a surprise? Yes. Oh. <laughs> Bert, uh, say, have you the key to room 707? Uh, no, sir. They seem to keep losing it. Well, they don't hand them in, do they, sir? They leave with them in their pockets and they don't return them. Mm. Well, I've had to issue a duplicate. Ah, yeah. What? <laughs> I don't know anything about that. Why should you know anything about it? You're in the night porter. Rooms aren't your province anyway. This couple arrived late. They wanted the honeymoon suite, so I gave them a duplicate. But we're going. Well, I thought. Don't I... think. Just take those cases, you know. Ah. Uh... <laughs> I can't find her anywhere. I hope she's all right. Ah, she's in safe hands. Clyde's very reliable. Yes, and he is a medical man. Yeah. His hands are very rough. Aren't they? What? For a medical man. Well, he wears rubber gloves when he's operating. <laughs> Still, there's um, no point in hanging about. Are you going to summon the rolls, Malk? No, it's gone. Oh, hasn't turned into a pumpkin, has it? What do you mean? I feel like Cinderella. I arrive in a Rolls Royce and walk home. We don't have to go yet. Oh, but I thought you said... I can get a room. Here. What? I borrowed a key. We can have a room for an hour. An hour? You don't keep things for long, do you, Malcolm? What's the matter? Well, isn't this rather sudden? Yeah, I suppose it is. But you see, I've always had this terrible feeling that I was going to die young. 
You could be right. What? <laughs> Where is this room? 303, by the lift. Good. Handy for a quick getaway. Right. We can get in, get it over and get out. What's the matter? Nothing. You'd better go first. We don't want to be seen together. Good thinking. Room 303. Right. Is there any special knock? Ah. I'll be waiting. I'll powder my nose. Pretty woman, won't you walk on by? <laughs> oh, Clive, this is lovely. Yes. Oh, I know what you've done. Do you? You've taken this room for the night just for us. Well, not exactly, Jackie. Money's no object to you, is it, Doctor? Not where you're concerned, Jackie. Good heavens. Sixty pounds a night? And that's without breakfast. What? Oh. But who's thinking about breakfast, Mr. Impetuous? Mm. Oh, this is just like a dream. Oh. Not the fruit, Jackie. What do you mean, not the fruit? Well, it's a nice arrangement. It seems a pity to... Spoil it. Well, that's what it's there for, darling. And didn't Eve tempt Adam with an apple? <laughs> Clive? Yes? Is it through there? Room. I think so. <laughs> Should we explore? Why not? <laughs> Excuse me, are you the manager? I am the under manager. Can I help you, madam? Yes, I have a room on the third floor. And I wish to complain about the noise coming from 303. Oh, I think you must be mistaken, Mrs... Uh, de Havilland. Mrs. De Havilland. Um, room 303 is unoccupied. <laughs> it may be unoccupied, but there are certain... Nocturnal activities taking place. Nocturnal activities? Could you uh, elaborate, madam? Certainly. Creaking bed springs, occasional shouts of triumph, <laughs> objects falling off the wall. As far as I'm concerned, that room is being used for what I can only describe as carnal pleasures. Oh, I can't believe this, Mr. Devlin. I think you'd better. I understand that people from the disco are in the habit of using that room. People from the disco. Leave this to me, Mrs. Devil. Porter. Lovely to look at, delightful to see. Coming to my parlour, said a spider to the fly. Yes. Sorry to disturb you, sir, but could you count for your presence in this room? My presence? How amusing. I mean, this is a hotel, isn't it? You do let rooms. Yes, but not this one, sir. Look, it's getting late. Couldn't we leave this till the morning? Yeah. You seem to be travelling amazingly light, sir. Yes, well, if you care to check by the desk, you'll find that my cases are on their way up. I've never known such incompetence. I'd like to point out to you that I'm a valued customer. I always stay in the Royal when I'm in town, and always in room 308. But this is 303, is it? 303? You're suggesting I don't know my own room number? Good heavens, you're right. <laughs> How stupid of me. Sorry to have been a nuisance. I'll say good evening. <laughs> Got a man in uniform and he acts like the Gestapo. Ride the suit! You'll hear from my lawyers about this. 
You, come on. Don't push, don't come push. Just mind the cigarette, mind the air. Look, I'll carry you in. How'd you get on? <laughs> Great. <laughs> and you? Fantastic. <laughs> Woo, what a night. <laughs> Your coat's torn. Yeah, I know. It was a very passionate encounter, Clive. <laughs> Did you get a room? Did I get a room? <laughs> what happened? You know we don't kiss and tell milk. No? Sensational. Incredible. <laughs> I shall never forget it. Forget what? What do you think? You mean? I promised. You can tell me. No. Where is she? Sobering. Get in a coat. Well, you can just whisper. No, it wouldn't be right. Then shut up about it. There you are. I'm sorry about uh, what happened. It's all right. Oh, what happened? Nothing. Coitus interruptus. <laughs> Bit of a mix up in the bridal suite. Thanks for keeping me out of it. Oh, Jack. yes. I'll just see what happened to Jackie. <laughs> Sensational. Oh, and uh, this is for you, Mal. <laughs> sorry you got thrown out. It was that Mrs. Diavel and Roch Hopters. Better luck next time, eh? <laughs> Better luck next time, eh? No? Oh. Yes, oh. Look at his suit. Ruin beyond repair. See my lapels? I look lop-eared. I'm sorry. Sorry? Well, sorry's not good enough. I just didn't want you to think I was a pushover. Pushover? That's the last word I'd associate with you. You could have said no. I was angry. You're always angry. You were born angry. No wonder he left you. Don't say that. What have you got that's so valuable? The crown jewels? Well, you can keep them. You can leave them to the nation for all I care. Does that mean you won't be taking me home? What? You're talking to me? What have you got planned for me next? You're going to mug me in a taxi. <laughs> Stitch your jacket. No, thanks. Well, if you change your mind, just whistle. What? You know how to whistle, don't you? You just put your lips together and blow. 